What's up guys? Today's an exciting day. Behind me I have my M3 Touring and the new massive XM 4x4 by M actually. New BMW Ultimate 4x4 car which looks pretty awesome. And today, thanks to BMW Nice Premium Motors, they're actually lending me this for an entire day. So I'm going to spend a day with it, see what it's all about because it's intrigued me a lot. So let's grab the keys. Just got in behind the wheel of the car. I'll do a full walk around as soon as we get home and, and not long. I want to properly look around all the details of this thing. Now it's quite funny because instantly you're in hybrid mode. So when you're bootling around town, it's fully powered by the electric engine. So it's completely silent. And it feels a bit odd at something of this size, it being completely electric. But you get that instant kind of um, response from the electric engine. But then as soon as you want to, you just double click on this M2 button here. I'm into manual and then the V8, uh, funny feeling. I don't know how much of that is actually coming through the speakers and how much of it is real, but you get little pops. Ready, listen. Don't know if you'll hear that on camera. Nuts passing from a basically an electric car to a big brunty 650 horsepower V8. Even though it weighs about as much as a, an apartment block, it still feels pretty quick. A car this size should not be able to do that. So yeah, it really intrigued me, but let's get home and let's have a poke around the inside and outside. We're home now and we're gonna be able to have a proper look around. Let's, I really wanna go around all of the exterior, all of the interior, every button, poke around and really discover this car. It is huge. 2.7 tons, obviously hybrid engine. So you've got the electric engine, which can produce up to 200 horsepower, and then the petrol V8, 4.4 liter, which can produce up to 490, but total you're around 650 horsepower for 800 Newton meters of torque. So very, very powerful beast, but also huge. Don't know if it comes across so much on camera right here. But around the exterior, I mean, I thought this thing was pretty gross design-wise when I first saw it kind of grows on you but i'm still not convinced i mean i don't really understand what's going on here with the split tail lights it's like on the i7 i find it looks uh looks pretty particular the grill looks just too big in my opinion they are horizontal little slats there rather than vertical that you see on others and not as beaver tooth as on the m3 but yeah i don't know i kind of got used to the beaver tooth look and i, I just think that front grill looks a bit odd from the side is just huge. And am I the only one who thinks it also kind of looks like a dog doing a number two? But it's weirdly kind of somewhat growing <laughs> on me. I mean, you have these huge 23 inch wheels um, with the kind of written out BMW logo, which I haven't seen before. Um, speaking of logos, actually, one cool touch is around back here. You have a BMW logo on each side, which I think is a little bit of an arc back to the M1, which had that too. And obviously the kind of very recognizable vertical exhaust pipes, which are real actual exhaust pipes. So fair play on that. And those actually, again, I wasn't sure of when I first saw them, look kind of cool. When you see them here, they're kind of on this like blackish finish. Um, and those look kind of funky. You have a huge boot actually while we're here, I don't know if this is my OCD, but the fact that there's no logo and the model sign is just slightly off to the left really annoys my OCD. But, oh well, that's how it is. Now, the boot is absolutely, hello, absolutely enormous. It's very high up. It's a flat entry, which is nice, but it's very, very high up. And you surprisingly don't have any buttons to put the rear seats down. They do go down, I'll show you that in a bit, but you don't have any buttons to do it. You can see here, product page for this. This comes out at 183,500 euros, but as it is a hybrid, you get less tax. So on the M3 Touring, for example, in France, you have 50,000 euros worth of tax which you get none of that on this car. This fancy little bag has all your charging cables. This is obviously a um, plug-in hybrid, so you have all of your cables there. Only thing is it doesn't charge that fast, the plug-in hybrid part, and you can only do 50 kilometers with it. But nonetheless, if you have a short commute every day, this is gonna be hard to do with one hand. There you go. 
efficiency. Okay, there you go. If you've just got a short commute every day, I guess that could somewhat work. So yeah, loads of space, and that's continued in the rear seats. It's raining, so let's head inside the car. Convenient timing for it to start raining. Look at this rear space here. It's gonna get very dark all of a sudden. I love that leather wrapping around. But it's very dark back here because you have tinted windows, but I'm surrounded by leather. And little M details, like the M stitching on the seat belts. And there is loads of headroom and also loads of legroom. Look at that, I have loads of space and actually quite a few fun little gadgets that I can kind of play around with in the back here. So heated seats come as standard, you got your dual zone climate control, you have two USB outlets down there, USB-C, and then here I can actually either charge again with a USB-C or plug in an iPad or something like that. The front seats look pretty beastly and wide. Cool design actually on the front seats. And it's very comfy back here. The middle seat doesn't kind of rise up too much and it's very kind of spongy um, seating and leather back here. You can put this down and you have your cup holders, which is lovely, or you can take it all the way down and ay, there you go. If you wanna put skis or anything like that, and you can then also put this rear seat down. Boom, there you go. And you have direct access to the boot and it's that easy. It's not completely flat, but it's pretty good. Look guys, maturing. I'm now talking about boot space and all this stuff. What is going on? Okay, it started to rain hard while we're doing this. You ready? Let's run into the front. Three, two, one. Okay. South of France, good weather, they said. That's a welcome noise that you get when you come into the car. You get a nice little animation of an XM right there. And when you press the start button, you get another noise. Ooh. And you actually get a cool light show up there. Wait, let me switch it back off. So that's when you switch it off. But when I switch it on, is it gonna do it again? Yeah, you get the M colors, pretty cool. 183,000 euro car. Should be the most luxurious thing out there, pretty much. And it is very nice, it's very plush. All the materials feel lovely. This leather is amazing. You have little M details hidden all around, like the lights we just saw, but also your XM logo right there. You have more of that going on here on your gear shifter, this is Basically exactly the same as in my M3. Carbon fiber finishing all over the place. You can charge your phone here. These cup holders are heated and cooled. All the leather feels super expensive and luxurious. More M details like carbon paddles and M2 buttons and stitching around the steering wheel. You got leather around the dash, you got Alcantara around the headlining. It is a very, very nice place to be. You also have the new curved digital display, which we're gonna see on a free BMW, I believe. A Harman and Kardon sound system right here. So yeah, don't get me wrong, this is a very nice place to be, however, does it feel like a huge step up from a nicely specced 3 Series like mine? Not particularly. Does it feel 180, 90 or even close to 200,000 euros worth in terms of the interior? It's very nice, but I mean, I don't think it's as nice as a DBX. I don't think it's as nice as an Urus. I mean, I know that's a lot more expensive, but and I don't think it's as nice as the new Range Rover interiors. So it's a very, very, very nice place to be, as it should be. Maybe not quite there with some of its competition, if I may say so. There are obviously loads of modes that you can play around with. So if we look here, you can decide on hybrid, electric, or e-control. You've then got normal or sport, and you can set up your M1 and your M2 configuration buttons. These are things that we've seen in all M product cars. Sorry, you can tell that you also get a lot of fingerprints on this screen. You can't, however, go into two-wheel drive mode. 
So four wheel drive, four wheel drive sport or four wheel drive sand, presumably more off-roady. How many people are actually gonna off-road this car though? Not many. And you can adjust everything like on your classic BMWs. So you can do your electric engine recuperation. We'll use some of the energy, the unused energy from the different components of the car to charge up the battery. Your chassis, you know, basically your suspension, do you want it comfort sport or sport plus? Direction, brakes, direction is steering by the way, in Francais. Oui, 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 monsieur. And you've got a plethora of little M logos hidden all around the place to remind you that this is not any BMW 4x4, this is the XM, sir. Down here, you have all your light controls. You have your boot button, which is up here. In the 3 Series, it's down there. And that is now your fuel filler cap button, release button. You do also get nice aluminium pedals in this, see? Beautiful. All of this is this nice kind of metallic feeling finish. You have, of course, heated seats, all of the above. Plenty of other buttons here to speed up the gear changes. Eight speed gearbox, uh, traction off, your cameras, your parking sensors, and then all those setup buttons we looked at just before. All this is if you're doing some serious off-roading, and then here, your classic BMW system to control what's going on on the screen. Apart from that, like most modern cars, there aren't that many other physical buttons, just what you need to control your volume, change song, and your defrosters. The seats are very nice. You can adjust them in every way imaginable. They're very comfortable. Uh, they hold you in a decent amount on the drive here, I felt, but they're definitely more angled towards luxury and you being comfortable, sir. Let's go for a drive now. Let's drive this thing. Start up noise, start up lights, and off we go. So it starts, everything kicks off in fully electric, well, in hybrid mode. So at first it is fully electric. Now you can have it in the pure electric, which gives you 50 kilometers of range, but actually having the option of putting this in fully electric gives it an extra sense of luxury because it is so quiet in here because you don't have any engine noise, it's got such thick windows, everything is big and keeping all the noise out that it does really give it that luxury car feel. However, it instantly feels like kind of driving a bus. You have this huge front hood in front of you. You're sat so high up, a large car. So look, check this out. If we're just poodling around town like this, fully electric, 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 and then if I put my foot down, there it is, there's the V8. It just kicks in after a while. So, let's get into it. We are in hybrid, so using only the electric engine on the motorway. M2, we're gonna do exactly what we did in the first part of this video. M2 mode. Woo! Oh, that sounds good. That sounds good, I mean, good, good gearbox. Does feel a little bit like yeah, I mean, it's, it's very impressive. It is very fast, this car. I mean, it's actually shocking how fast it is for something that weighs 2.7 tons. <laughs> I mean, I don't even want to think how much that V8 is drinking right now when you're putting your foot down. Whoa! Eight-speed gearbox down. It does feel a little bit like there's a lot of communication going on between the engine, the petrol engine, the electric engine, the gearbox. There's just a lot of communicating, which sometimes maybe feels slightly, very slightly clumsy, but like, I'm really nitpicking here. I mean, I don't know. It's very impressive, this car. It's very good, and I feel very safe, and it feels very competent, like, it will do everything very well, and it does have a pretty amazing breadth of ability in its character. But, there's just something which I'm like, is this the M I I really wanted them to make right now is a 4x4 2.7 ton hybrid what I really wanted M to make oh and it's another ton no I would much rather that they made a sports car you know a, a, a proper kind of homage to the uh, to the M1 there's a traffic jam here that really brought out that all the you know 
knowledge that M has built over the years, a car that isn't just on paper impressive. So this is a technological marvel, right? You have an electric engine that you can do 50 kilometers on. It gives you so many advantages, quick throttle response. The turbos will give you from a small capacity engine an incredible amount of power. Um, you're able to drive it around town and have a great kind of daily town car if you ignore the size. Then you're able to have a sporty car on the Autobahn where you can go very, very fast. It's on paper, it's amazing, right? But there's something that just, it's, it's not about on paper and M's have never always been that much about being on paper. And this is maybe just me speaking and you don't agree with me and completely valid. Most of the time I don't even agree with me, so no hard feelings on that. But there's something which is just about how it makes you feel and how you feel in the car, no matter the stats and how impressive what you put on paper is, you can't really necessarily get around the fact that certain things make cars fun and all this new technology which on paper is amazing and makes cars better for sure actually creates some sort of a distance between you and what you're really here for which is the great big v8 and honestly if you're spending 200,000 euros on a car of this type is because you you like cars or you have unlimited money but probably because you like cars and the reason you pick this one is also because it has that v8 and all these things that on paper are so impressive just feel like they're putting a distance between you and that engine, which is what you really came here for. The electric engine, the turbochargers, all these things mean, yes, when you put it in M, it sounds good and it's impressive, the speed's impressive and stuff, but it's just this weird feeling of, I just feel far away from the main attraction here and I feel like there's something between me and it and that's just like a slightly frustrating feeling. It's like if you went to a concert but you were sat so far away from stage that you ended up just watching the, the big screen the whole time. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I was there. It was great. I enjoyed being there, but I was watching it on a big screen so it wasn't quite as special. Whereas if you're front row and you got that concert hitting you right in the face and the visuals of it and everything that goes with it, that's what feels special. And that's what I personally feel this new staple M car could have been. That being said, it is a great car. Like you can't, I can't sit here and be like, oh, well, you know, I'm maybe just uh, not with the times and I'm not up to date. And I can only give you my personal opinion and I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that. And honestly, there's not many things you can fault with it. The interior is great quality. The electric engine's fantastic. The V8 works well. You have loads of space. Design is questionable, but that's, you know, that's personal. Everyone will decide. And it's another tunnel. God. Okay, we're finally out of the tunnel again. What I meant was everything works well. New screen works well. All the, everything you touch feels very quality. There's fantastic storage absolutely everywhere. Um, just everything works really well, so you can't fault it. Like, it is a, a great, if you're looking for a big, powerful, luxurious, spacious, uh, German-made car, which is cheaper than an Urus or a DBX 707 or or even a G63 or, or things like that, then this is this is great. I mean, there's, you, you cannot argue that. It's just not what I really wanted M to be making right now. Hope that makes sense. I could blab on about it for ages. I would really love to get your opinion in the, uh, in the description down below. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want more. And I'm about to go into another tunnel. So I'm going to say bye now. Cheers guys. Ciao, ciao.